Hi everybody and welcome to Chem Talk, where today we'll be talking about hybridization and hybrid orbitals. Before we begin, it would be helpful to review Chem Talk's videos on electron configuration, Vesper theory, and molecular orbital theory if you are not already familiar. So, building off previous concepts of Vesper theory, Vesper theory establishes the shapes and angles of different molecules based on the number of bonds and lone pairs around a central atom. But here we will explain why those angles and shapes actually occur and why molecules and how atoms actually bond. The first main example we will use and work through is methane. So we can first draw the basic Lewis structure to view the molecule with the central carbon and four CH bonds. Experimentally and logically, we can see that the four CH bonds should be and are equal. And since the bonds are equal, they will have the same bond energy and the same bond length. And if we look back to Vesper theory, the CH molecule with four bonds on the central carbon and no lone pairs should be tetrahedral. So we can draw the Lewis structure to represent the three-dimensional shape of the molecule. So far, so good. Everything is making sense. So now let's kind of look, start looking at how these atoms actually bond, the central carbon and the four hydrogens. So we can, we can draw out the electron configuration for the central atom, the carbon atom. If we draw out the 1s, 2s, and 2p orbitals, for carbon, we know that it has six electrons. So the 1s orbital will be full, the 2s orbital will be full, and there will be two unpaired electrons in the 2p orbital. Now, if we review what covalent bonding is, because here the carbon and the hydrogen will covalently bond, covalent bonding informally is the sharing of electrons between atoms. So an atom here, it may be like with hydrogen, if you have two hydrogens, one hydrogen will have one unpaired electron and the other hydrogen will have another unpaired electron. And these unpaired electrons overlap and a covalent bond is formed involving the sharing of these electrons between the atoms. So with that idea of the covalent bond, if we look at the number of unpaired electrons in carbon, there are only two. So that means it can only form two covalent bonds. Well, that doesn't really make sense. But also if we look at look further, that the four valence electrons, which are there are two in the 2s orbital and there are two in the 2p orbital, well, they're from different orbitals, so they would have different bonds that they would make. But we know that in methane, the four CH bonds are all identical, so that can't be the case. So that means you're missing something. The answer to this problem above was answered in 1931 by Linus Pauling. He discovered and demonstrated the existence of the hybrid orbital, that s and p orbitals can form to create multiple hybrid orbitals. Now some rules about hybrid orbitals. Hybrid, orbital, hybrid orbitals do not exist in lone atoms. They are only formed in a covalent bond, such as in methane here where the carbon and the hydrogen covalently bond. Also, all orbitals in a set of hybrid orbitals are equivalent shape and geometry. So they're all the same if they're the same hybrid orbital. Also, hybrid orbitals create the geometry predicted by Vesper. So that's what accomplishes the and creates the proper geometry pr predicted by Vesper theory, such as for the CH4 molecule that we were looking at earlier. So now we can go to our original example with methane and draw the original carbon electron configuration, the full electron configuration having the 1s, the 2s, and the 2p orbitals with the x, y, and z states. So there will be two electrons in the 1s, two electrons in the 2s, and two electrons in the 2p orbital, which will be in the 1, 2px and 2py. Visually, these orbitals can be drawn as a small sphere for the 1s orbital, a slightly larger sphere for the 2s orbital, and a three-dimensional figure 8 for the 2p orbitals, just with different orientations depending on the x, the y, and the z. Now, hybrid orbitals specifically look at the valence orbitals because those are the ones that are actively involved in bonding. So here we know that we need four unpaired electrons, so that means we need four orbitals. So we will use the 2s and the 2p orbitals, which will together make four orbitals to create the hybrid orbitals. So if there are four hybrid orbitals and each has one electron, then this is makes the sp3 hybrid orbital because it comes from 1s orbital and 3p orbitals, meaning sp3. The shape of the sp3 orbital looks as to be a shape, figure eight shape as well, with a small s with a small lobe and a larger lobe. And this comes from it being a combination of the s and p atomic orbital. Each sp3 hybridized orbital bears an electron, and electrons repel each other. 
to minimize the repulsion between electrons, the four sp3 hybridized orbitals arrange themselves around the nucleus so that they are far away from each other as possible, resulting in this tetrahedral arrangement predicted by Vesper. The carbon atom in methane is then called an sp3 hybridized carbon atom. The larger lobes of the sp3 hybrids are directed towards the four corners of the tetrahedron, meaning that the angle between any two orbitals is 109.5 degrees, which again matches what is predicted by Vesper theory. Each bond, CH bond in methane, can then be described as an overlap between a half-filled 1s orbital and four hydrogen atoms, because a hydrogen atom has only a half-filled 1s orbital, and the larger lobe of one of the four sp3 orbitals from the uh, from the carbon. The orbit overlap is often described using the notation sp3 from the, from the carbon and 1s from the hydrogen. The formation of the sp3 hybrid orbitals successfully explains the tetrahedral structure of methane and the equivalency of the four bonds from the CH bonds. What remains is the explanation as to why the C sp3 hybrid orbitals form and why any of this really matters. So when the sp3 three orbital forms from the s and the 3p orbitals in carbon, it is, it is unsymmetrical with one lobe larger than the other. This means that the larger lobe can overlap more effectively with the orbitals from other bonds, making them even stronger. Thus, hybridizing allows for the carbon atom to form stronger bonds than it would be able to if it were unhybridized with s and p orbitals. So everything really always boils down to energy and trying to make minimize the amount of energy and it's also related to attraction and repulsion. So as you progress through organic chemistry, these core ideas are important to remember because they will inform as to why certain bonds are formed and how they may form, which is crucial to organic chemistry synthesis questions, thinking about how certain atoms will attach to other atoms and how different bonds will form, all of that good stuff when it comes to organic chemistry. So now we can use an example and figure out how and what the hybridization of certain atoms will be in certain bonds. So ethane is a common example. Um, ethane can be written as C2H6 or CH3CH3. So we can first visualize ethane using the um, Lewis structure of ethane with the two central carbons and the six hydrogens surrounding and the Vesper predicted geometry of ethane. Um, and with this we can see that there are there's a carb there are two carbons, two central carbons that we'll mainly be looking at. We can label them carbon one and carbon two. Carbon one needs four unpaired electrons because it makes four covalent bonds, three CH bonds, and one CC bond. So it needs four unpaired electrons. And the same for carbon two. Um, so we can really think about so we can think again about the carbon valence electron configuration. We see that it has the for just for the valence, it'll have the two S and the two P orbitals with the 2s full and the two electrons in the 2p orbitals, and we need four unpaired electrons. So that means we'll need four orbitals, so we can use one of the two, the one 2s orbital and the three 2p orbitals to create the sp3 orbital again. And this will be the same for both carbon 1 and carbon 2. So they will both be sp3 hybridized. Now often you can just have this memorized as using the Vesper theory chart because you know that based on the geometry, based on the number of lone pairs or bonds it has, you can figure out what the hybridization must be based on just how many unpaired electrons the central carbon needs. But I hope with this video you understand why and how it happens. Um, well, that's all, that's all for today. Thank you for watching and for more videos, visit www.chemistrytalk.org.